Since Mother Miranda brought her to the village, we have fallen into darkness. <laughs> the fuck is this? Taking a closer look at Mother Miranda's character as a whole, one could say that she played her part in Resident Evil Village fairly well. Though some may see the many faults in her character and decisions, this still doesn't take away from her grand overarching role within this franchise. Because in my opinion, Mother Miranda was a good antagonist to have in this series. She gave us a lot of content and lore that added to the spectacle that was Resident Evil. She used many new and unique abilities that were interesting to watch. And lastly, she was kind and manipulative. But great as all these traits were for a villain, she was still flawed in many aspects, which in this video, we will take a closer look into Mother Miranda, cover her overall story, background, and concept designs prior to her major antagonistic role in RE Village, and we'll even explain some of the more questionable decisions and plot inconsistencies she's made during the course of this game. So without any further ado, let's begin this video of Mother Miranda Explained. And I must stop her. Crazy bitch! Early concept designs for Mother Miranda was quite surprising to me, with early developmental concept designs for her had her as two separate characters, with one being a male cult leader of the village, similar to what we saw in Resident Evil 4's Osmond Sandler. And of course, this still remains as a central focus point in her finalized version, and how the villagers revered her as a godlike figure. <laughs> Also, another important concept was that this male cult leader version of Mother Miranda was also to be the father of Carl Heisenberg and the leader of the village. And not only that, besides the aesthetic of looking like a regular middle-aged man, it was noted that he had a secondary boss form, which came to be a mutated dragon-like creature, though that was changed and was instead given to Alcina Dimitrescu, which we would eventually see in full motion with our final encounter with her. Lastly, the other early concept character that made up Mother Miranda was a scientist, with her main objective was to study the mold prevalent within the area, and this early concept design to her character still remained in the finalized version of Mother Miranda. I will take what is due. Born in the late 19th century, Mother Miranda, or just Miranda at this point, lived in a village in the rural part of Eastern Europe. Nothing too spectacular going on in the early part of her life, though eventually she would have a daughter by the name of Ava in the year 1909. But in the years that followed, the pandemic known as the Spanish Flu would ravage the world, with a casualty estimated to be in the hundreds of millions. Unfortunately for Miranda, her daughter Ava would succumb to the Spanish Flu, dying at the young age of 10 years old in 1919. This left Miranda distraught from the death of her daughter, and in the peak of her depression, she decided to wander off in a cave nearby the village, with her intent to end her life within it. But once arriving inside the cave, she found the Megamyce, a colony of fungal root type organism living underneath everyone in the village and the nearby vicinity. Miranda's diary summarizes this moment. After I lost you, I was so stricken with grief that I wandered into a cave to die. I wanted to be with you again, and that's when I found it, the Megamyce. Completely by accident, when I touched the black substance, my mind was overcome with knowledge. The Megamyce breaks down and absorbs the consciousness of those who have perished. I knew if your consciousness was in there too, then there would be a way to bring you back. I just needed the right vessel. This revelation gave Miranda a way to bring her deceased daughter back. With the knowledge she received from the Megamyce, this would be the start of her plans to take action. After receiving the vast amounts of knowledge from the Megamyce, Miranda's next step was to find a viable host for Ava to return to. And in order to do this, Miranda had to conduct many experimentations with the Megamyce and the unfortunate villagers who live within the area, which she used this fungal organism, or we could say the mold experimentation, to inoculate many innocent lives. This came in a perfect opportunity when the nearby population suffered through a mysterious illness that caused them to vomit blood, losing many lives 
in the process, and those remaining desperately looking for a way to circumvent this, gave Miranda the chance to share her gift to those with ailment, which at first it seemed to have worked perfectly. Heralded as a sort of savior, Miranda would be known to be the prophet of the Black God, which was also known as the Megamyce, the Fungal Super Colony, or the Mold. What? This cure that she's provided the population gave her stature within the community, hence beholding her the title as Mother Miranda, becoming a cult leader of sorts, even having a prayer created specifically in her name. As the midnight moon rises on black wings, so we make our sacrifice and await the light at the end. In life and in death, we give you glory, Mother Miranda. Though as time went on, this gift that she gave the masses, we find out it was all part of her experiment using her Kado, which Mother Miranda created, a parasitic looking amalgamation using the Megamyce, and those unfortunate some who received her gift would pay the price, and eventually turning into a lichen-like monster so prevalent within the region. And finally, another passage from her diary recounts these events. When I returned to the village, I implanted the villagers with the mold from the Megamyce, that way I could control control them, experiment on them. I have experimented on hundreds of people just to find you a perfect vessel. I even tried to increase the efficiency of finding a vessel by creating a parasite I call Kado, yet none of my experiments came to fruition. There were some like Alcina who were close to being perfect, but most turned into lichens. Tomorrow we'll all be dead. Mother Miranda's experimentations with the villagers and those in the immediate proximity would continue on for decades to come, as she tries to find a suitable host for Ava using the Kado, with the most successful of these were the four lords of the village, with each individual given the Kado parasite, having differing effects on their body, some more reliable than others. <laughs> With Alcina de Matrasque having that larger than life stature, the retractable claws, and her final mutation, Donna Beneviento and her doll Angie, which she's able to spread a portion of her Kado to her dolls and control them from afar, Salvatore Moreau and his fish like abilities. <laughs> And finally, Carl Heisenberg and his abilities of electromagnetism. <laughs> All the four lords were deemed more of a success compared to the other Mother Miranda's failed experiments. And again, that small passage from her diary that we read earlier substantiates this fact. There were some like Alcina who were close to being perfect, but most turned into lichens. What the hell is wrong with this place? Sometime in the middle of the 20th century, a circumstantial meeting between Mother Miranda and Oswald E. Spencer would take place. And for those who don't know, Oswald Spencer was the overarching villain within the Resident Evil franchise, with his influence felt for many decades due to his many inhumane experiments, all covered up behind the facade of a pharmaceutical company known as the Umbrella Corporation, who Spencer was one of the co-founders of. But well before all that, Spencer does happen to stumble upon Mother Miranda's remote village in Eastern Europe. Pictures of his adventures in the area was shown in Miranda's lab. A huge revelation was revealed with Spencer's letter to Mother Miranda. Dear Miranda, my deepest apologies for not meeting you in person. I would love nothing more than to visit your quaint village once more. However, I am incredibly busy. Then again, I suppose for an immortal woman such as yourself, you no longer remember this poor half-dead medical student in the snow. I have always cherished the revelation I came to 15 years ago when I stayed in your village. I was inspired by your research to think one could transform a human by infecting them with an organism, positively visionary. I know with that knowledge, I could achieve my own vision for the next step in human evolution. Even after two world wars and humanity on the cusp of another, my conviction never wavered. I realized, however, through the many nights of intellectual talks you and I shared, that your conviction differed from mine. You hope to bring back a single dead person, while I aim to change the world. Your experiments on the mold would not have aided me in my endeavor to achieve an exponential infection. I thought a virus would be more effective. 
This is why, my dear, I had to leave you. I will regret never telling you goodbye. My apologies for reminiscing. I actually have news that I thought might please you. I have found the key to evolution, the progenitor, a virus found in Africa. I plan to start a company with friends and colleagues dedicated to the virus research. I will call it Umbrella, just like the symbol in the cave that we spoke about. I am one step closer to making my vision a reality. I hope you will be able to achieve your goal someday too. You taught me so much much and for that I will be forever in your debt. Sincerely, your lifelong student, Oswald E. Spencer. I was to become a god. No thanks, bro. This letter from Spencer was a huge plot point because it shows where he got his inspiration from. Also the fact that he held Mother Miranda in high regard. That's something very rare to see because the Spencer we knew was extremely evil. He captured and experimented on people, backstabbed his own friends and colleagues, and even had them assassinated, and was fully aware of the consequences of his research into the progenitor virus, which resulted into the T and G virus we saw during the Raccoon City outbreak, which thousands of lives were lost due to that incident. Also another important information was pointed out by Spencer was that he knew Mother Miranda was immortal because looking at her now, it was surprising to see someone over a century old looking so young. <laughs> So Spencer knew that the mold from the Megamyce provided this fountain of youth for Miranda, though disagreed with her method of using it only to revive her dead daughter. Lastly, the inspiration to create the Umbrella Corporation and its logo came from Spencer's visit within this village, using that village's four lords insignia found in one of the caves. Wait a second, that looks familiar. In the end though, it was a good thing that these two individuals eventually went their separate ways. Because could you have imagined if Spencer had decided to help Mother Miranda in her research into the mold, or even maybe the possibility of him researching the progenitor virus along with the mold strain altogether, that would have been a catastrophic scenario that luckily for the Resident Evil world didn't happen. But besides all that information we just covered, no further interactions were noted between Spencer and Mother Miranda. The child will be sacrificed. Sacrificed life for life. What kind of sick medieval shit is this? In the early part of the new millennia, Mother Miranda still continued her further research into the Megamyce and the Mold, and around this time she would be approached by the mysterious crime syndicate called The Connections, with Mother Miranda providing a small synopsis of this interaction. I was once approached by an organization who said they would assist me. I gave them some of the Mold and your DNA, talking about her daughter Ava, but all they created was another defect, Evelyn. Then again, not a complete failure. I learned of Rose thanks to them, and I knew she would be the perfect vessel. There were some interference, but I was able to verify her suitability. Now my research is finally complete. Ava, I have waited too long to see you again. She will be reborn as my daughter. From this information provided, we learned that with Mother Miranda's help, the B.O.W. Evelyn that we fought in Resident Evil 7 was created, a bioweapon that was able to produce and control the mold strain, giving her unprecedented power over those infected with it, resulting in the case of the Baker family we saw in Dolby, Louisiana, and all their insane antics due to Evelyn's control over them. But even with the power to control the mold with proficiency, Mother Miranda didn't deem her as a good vessel for Ava. She was, as she puts it, not a complete failure though. And also I found it interesting that we found photos of Mother Miranda with the young Evelyn, showing how involved she was with the connections, and how fully aware she was with the results, and was in a way acquainted with Mia Winters. The fuck is this? Though even with all this information given in regards to her involvement with the connections and the B.O.W. Evelyn, this would be the final catalyst that would propagate Mother Miranda's final plan of reviving her daughter. We'll be together forever. So if you haven't played Resident Evil Village yet, the overall premise here was Ethan Winters trying to save his kidnapped daughter Rose, all of this happening 3 years after the Dolby Louisiana incident where the mold strain spread due to the B.O.W. Evelyn, which at that time Ethan and Mia were in the midst of that horrible event. Though now some time has passed, with the couple settling in in their new life in Europe with the help of Chris Redfield, well soon after the start of the game, a seemingly quick turn of events would occur, Chris Redfield now turned 
turn into a villain as he kills Mia right in front of Ethan and takes away Rose. Well, we come to find out that this was all a ruse later on because as we continue on in the game, Ethan would find himself right in the middle of this remote village. Here he would encounter lichen like monsters, greeted by a seemingly crazed old hag, and the residents at a state of shock as well. Took your damn <laughs> which they still pray to Mother Miranda, paying homage to that cult-like religion she's propagated decades prior. And then finally a small glimpse of her and how she treats the innocent villagers. Though the bigger of these encounters with Mother Miranda early on happens when she has that meeting with the other four lords of the region, introducing Ethan to the major antagonist of this game. Give the mortal to me. We thank you for waiting. Though after the introduction with the four lords and Mother Miranda, we won't see from this cult leader for the vast majority of the game, where the only mention of her was from Alcina during her phone conversation. Mother Miranda, I regret to inform you that Ethan Winters has escaped that fool Heisenberg. Because he is in my castle and has already proven too much for my daughters to handle. When I find him... No, Mother Miranda. Yes, of course, I understand the importance of the ceremony. I won't let you down. Oh! Oh! To hell with the ceremony! That man will pay for what he's done! Salvatore Moreau's seemingly mother issues <laughs> and Carl Heisenberg's disdain for her. It's a test to see if you're strong enough to be a part of Miranda's family. I don't want to be a part of Miranda's family. Neither did I, but here we are. And I'm next in line, right? Kill me, move up the chain, well fuck this! I don't give a damn about your personal issues. But as the game progresses on, we have a huge revelation involving Mother Miranda. Because remember earlier I mentioned that the attack on Mia Winters by Chris Redfield at the beginning of the game was all a ruse. Because we come to find out that it was Mother Miranda all along. Which we learned some time prior to the start of the game. Mother Miranda would kidnap Mia and shape shift into her place within the Winters household. Here her plans to abduct Rose would start as she observes on the possible vessel for her daughter Ava. With her reasoning swore this was all due in part to the events in Resident Evil 7, the mold strain that infected both Mia and Ethan, and on top of that she knew that he was a special case as well, because we find out that Ethan himself was a mold being, where he died in Resident Evil 7, and the only reason he's alive right now was due to the mold, and the fact that he was still able to conceive a baby with Mia, who herself was exposed to the mold strain for years. Mother Miranda sought to it to get her hands on their baby Rose, seeing her as the perfect vessel for Ava. Eva, due to the possibility of her having the powers over the mold like Evelyn, though without any of the defects. Rose? Ethan! Ethan, respond! Mia? What? Our child. She's so important, isn't she? She's everything to me. <laughs> and mine to me. With Heisenberg gone. You've lost your lead. What are you going to do? I don't know, but I'm saving Rose. You'd never know, do you? Even when I took Mia's place in your home. Poor Ethan. Who are you? Where's Rose? <laughs> <laughs> Remember Evelyn and her power over the mold? Rose is her successor. No, Rose is Evelyn's true, complete form. She will grow to fully control the masses. And I must have her! Fuck you, you crazy bitch! Uh, 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 uh. Calm yourself. Rose will be safe. The Mega My Seat catalogs all of us. However, she will be reborn as my daughter. She's my child, not yours! Where are you? Show yourself! Why did Rose come to be? Was it because of her parents? 
And you are truly a special case. But I've learned all I can from you. Your worth as a lab rat has run out. Miranda! You coward! Come on and face me! Don't worry. Your death will come quick. You will join the Megamycetes records. I will make sure to sample your blood for later. Once dawn breaks, the ceremony will be complete, and I will become her true mother, bound for eternity in blood. <laughs> I've waited so long, but dreams really can come true. Vessel or not, I can't wait to see my true child again. So playing out the early portion of the game, Rose, Ethan, and Miranda would be taken by Chris, and during their transportation, Mother Miranda would be able to make her escape with Rose, explaining how Ethan found himself by the crash site, which was in the forest nearby the village. And subsequently around this time, we have a passage on what happens to Mother Miranda and Rose once arriving in the village themselves. February 9th, I was instructed to take the items to the cave church at sunrise, but what I saw was frightful. The great four lords were there, and Mother Miranda was holding a child. She whispered something and touched the child. I can't explain it well, but the child turned into a white crystal? Then, then, she... I couldn't help but speak up. I asked her why she did such a thing. Mother Miranda just smiled at me. This is the chosen child. She will return to her original form no matter what befalls her. Then she gave each lord a part of the crystal in a flask, and they left. I forgot to bow to Mother Miranda before I fled. I'm still shaking. What did she do? What is that child? Mother Miranda! Mind you, this crystallization form could be a similar process to what we saw with Zoe Baker in Resident Evil 7, but in Rose's case, she would be divided up in four pieces and given to each of the lords of the village, and having Ethan fight the four lords to retrieve all parts of his daughter back in one piece. But given this plot point of Miranda already having her hands on Rose, why split her apart in four pieces in the first place? These decisions on our character's part gave some questionable moments during this game, but as mentioned early in the video, we will cover all these plot lines surrounding her decisions. It was all worthless. Is that so? I assume you've picked up something of value. Not sure if it's a value, but... Why, you have your daughter right in your own hands. What are you saying? Take a closer look. That flask seems to contain her head. No. What? Rose is... Don't say another word! This... This is impossible! This just can't be! Your daughter's essence is still intact. Her powers are truly unique. Who... Who could even do this? She can be saved, you know. Saved? From this? Are you insane? Anyways, the game continues on. Mother Miranda reveals her true intent to Ethan. We see her shape shift several times in this moment, seeing her become Mia, the old hag we saw a couple of times during our playthrough, and of course her true form. Then after that, she does acknowledge that Ethan was special as well, but shortly after would kill him, or so she thought, because due to the mold strain that made Ethan's body at this point, this allowed him to survive that fatal injury by Mother Miranda. Though knowing that this body was breaking down, it was just enough time for him to have that final confrontation with her. My beautiful daughter. Come to me. Is that you? Oh, how 
I've missed you! What? My power is leaving me! Rose! Miranda! Interesting. Your body certainly isn't normal. Give Rose to me. Now! You will see. Once I kill you properly, every- Get her now! <sighs> <sighs> And you try to take it away from me. I will take what is due. My desires will be fulfilled! No. Rose is mine! What the fuck? You fulfilled your purpose, Mr. Winters. You disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious Nick I found it interesting listening to Mother Miranda's reasonings for her actions, fully believing that Rose was her rightful daughter and that she is the perfect version of Evelyn, making her the suitable host that she always desired for Ava. But as we learn from this final fight, somehow Mother Miranda does seem to lose some of her powers. With that, we'll answer along with the other questionable moments in this game. How can you deny me? Why the hell can't you realize Rose is my goddamn kid, not yours? The men in my seat saved me from the pits of despair. It granted me this splendid power! Yeah, right. All it's done is drive you nuts. Now, Mr. Winters, I think it's time you left things in my hands. If I combine Rose with a Megamycet, my daughter will be made manifest at last! I've waited a century, a century, all for this day. Why do you eat me? Surely you have no need of Rose now, so close to death. She's my goddamn daughter, you psycho. The villagers, those foreign sheep, they could do nothing to assuage my years of loneliness. Ever think the problem might be you, Miranda? You're not <laughs> capable of real love. Die, 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 die. I will take back my daughter! This is how you end the winners. My daughter! But in the end, she does lose to Ethan as she crumbles away in ashes, finally ending this supposed immortal being and revealing Rose to be safe and sound, though costing Ethan's life in the end. Watch over her. Teach her to be strong. God damn it. Goodbye, Rosemary. So the first question that comes to mind in terms of decision making that Mother Miranda made was why go through all the trouble of shape shifting into Mia and living with Ethan and Rose for that short amount of time? I mean she had the capabilities of doing many various things using her powers of the mold. Why waste time pretending to be Mia? Not only that, she might as well have just left with Rose without Ethan knowing. She couldn't have just said that she was just going out to the park or something, but instead she did decide to play as Mia, telling creepy bedtime stories and snapping at Ethan's several times. We moved here so that she wouldn't have to deal with any of that, remember? There's nothing wrong with my memory. You're just being paranoid. Did you say something? Nothing. I'll put her down. Mm, 
That smells good. What's that? Oh, hands off, mister. Though the most plausible answer to all of this was that she wanted to observe Rose closely and see if she would be the perfect host for her daughter Ava. Because she knew about the connections, she knew about Evelyn and the mold, and she knew about Ethan and Mia being exposed to it. So having a child born from the mold and seemingly not being a defect version that she thought Evelyn was, this would have been the perfect opportunity to take a closer look into Rose and making sure that she wouldn't end up like Evelyn, which she does figure out and this all ties in with the Megamyces abilities. But we'll get to that soon. Think we can just forget about what happened in Louisiana? It happened so long ago. Now the second question was why even shape shift into the old hag? I mean if our were Mother Miranda, why even try to give Ethan hints during his journey? She already had possession of Rose at that time, so why entertain the thought of helping Ethan in the first place? Well to answer that we have to tie in the events that we knew she's done, which was crystallizing Rose, separating her into four and giving each lord of the village a portion of her, and that it was well noted that Rose would still survive this. Also subsequently around this time, Mother Miranda did conclude that Rose was the perfect vessel for Ava, so her next step was to get rid of all loose ends, hence the four lords and the remaining villagers. That's why we saw them ravaged by lichens and the four lords given a flask of Rose to protect, with Mother Miranda knowing full well of the possibility of them dying in the process of protecting it. Also, we have to take into account that for each death happening in the village, the Megamyce, which is buried underneath, was growing in size and power, because we knew that the Megamyce did absorb those who died within the vicinity and hence helped it to become stronger. So what better way to fully realize the power of the Megamyce but by killing off those who gained abilities from it. Hence the four lords who benefited the most compared to the many others, giving back enough power to the Megamyce by the end of Resident Evil Village and enacting her ceremonial attempt of reviving her daughter back within Rose. Also another question comes to mind during this last encounter with Mother Miranda which was her reasonings of losing her power. Well if we stand back and look at the Megamyce as a whole, we know that this organism in a way was a neural network which was able to absorb genetic code and consciousness of those people who've died within the vicinity. While this same principle could work between those infected by the mold strain or those who've touched the Megamyce, which is not a far-fetched idea that those exposed to the Megamyce or the mold strain would be able to somehow communicate with one another and be able to transfer and absorb others' powers in real time with roles who literally just came out from the Megamyce during the ceremony scene, this neural network had Rose and Miranda connected, which at this point she was able to take Miranda's powers away, or more so weaken her enough so that her father Ethan could take her down completely. So the way I see it was that the Megamyce itself was a huge hive mind centralized point, where Miranda gained her knowledge and was able to communicate with those others infected by it. And this was also supported by Evelyn, because we knew that she was able to take control of those infected by the mole strain, and even communicate with them in a telepathic manner. Manner, which all this connection could be all the same with the Megamyce, with Mother Miranda, and finally with Rose, who was able to wield the power of the mold completely, which she did hint at years later when she was all grown up. We have a situation. You're needed, <laughs> Evelyn. Don't you ever call me that again. Whoa, whoa, it's just a joke, Rose. I can show you things even Chris doesn't know I can do. But in conclusion, Mother Miranda was a solid addition to the many Resident Evil villains, a woman longing to bring back her daughter, but using many inhumane means to do so. Also the fact that her influence over Oswald E. Spencer was a huge catalyst that would cause some many catastrophes during the Resident Evil timeline, which those included the outbreak of the T-Virus and the many more variants that came after. Though Mother Miranda did have many questionable flaws, it was still great to see an enemy who was able to wield the mold in that capacity, showing many new and unique abilities and possibly a preview on what powers Rose can attain once she masters using the mold. I need to keep it together, Rose. Anyways, what were your thoughts on Mother Miranda? Did you like her as a villain in Resident Evil Village? Or do you think that her questionable decisions ruin her character as a whole? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the content, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day. And this is Heydeva, and I'll see you guys on the next video. My Eva! What the fuck is this?